Alright, and no fun, and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the Dangerous Systems mod, which is being made by user Mustang Cat. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is a lovely little assortment of random parts of a more technological nature, which I've been having a lot of fun with so far. So let's uh, jump into the vehicle assembly building and have a look at what all we do get. Now let's grab ourselves a Mark 1-3 command pod for size comparison's sake, and then turn on our mod filter just leaving on... It should it is it supposed to be pronounced with how it's capitalized Dan Garis? I mean, with the mod maker's name being Mus Dan Cat, that's a possibility. I'm gonna still stick with dangerous though. Just leave that one on, and then head down to the engines category where we have the first three of five parts total. So not a very large mod pack, but some pretty interesting things here. And let's begin with the first part, and that is the Lightning Kerbstein Turbojet, which has a built-in alternator producing eight electric charge per second. And as for the engine aspect, it does have a maximum thrust of 512.793 kilonewtons with an ISP of 640,000. Quite, uh, quite the efficient engine. And it will use air intake, liquid fuel, as well as electric charge. Like I said, these all these parts are of a more technological nature, so all of them are going to be using a pretty large amount of power to run. And finally on it, it does have some gimbling with a vectoring range of 3 degrees. Now the next one we've got here is the just gigantic Star Kerbstein Drive. Now this one's meant to be used in space and has a max thrust in vacuum of 2,000 kilonewtons with an ISP of 10,000. This time using liquid fuel and oxidizer, but once again, electric charge and quite a bit. 12, over 12 electric charge per second for this thing to run, but boy does it produce a lot of thrust. Lovely. Now the next and final engine we have is the Thunder Kerbstein rocket nozzle, which will produce a much smaller amount of thrust than the last engine at just a hundred, with an engine ISP of 8,000, and using liquid fuel and oxidizer once again, as well as, of course, electric charge. And much like the first engine, the Lightning, this one also does have a gimbling vector range of three degrees. Now moving on down to the communication category, we have an awesome Sphere Long Range Com Scan Antenna. I really like this thing. Not only is it a cool, unique looking antenna, you don't normally see these kinds in the game, uh, but it's a data transmitter, of course, both for direct data transmission as well as relay data transmission, which is very good. It, of course, does have curb net access and does also serve as an orbital scanner, which is wonderful. So it's kind of an all-in-one thing here, both communication and science, which is magnificent. Now then, finally, we have down in utility, the D-Duster Dust Accumulator, which is a resource converter that'll actually take electric charge at a rate of five per second and turn it into ore at one per second. And I love the idea of this, that it's basically like a giant electromagnet pulling in, like, uh, ferrous dust, I guess, from around its environment, whether you're in space or on a planetary surface. So just gathering it all together to turn it into ore, which is pretty cool. So let's take a look at these all in, in well, I guess the actual VAB here. I don't know where I was going at that sentence, starting with the D-Duster, and it's a pretty cool little thing. I, again, I love this idea of just like a powerful electromagnet sucking in magnetically charged dust around it and accumulating it into to actual ore, and plus it's a pretty cool looking part. My one little complaint about it is it has kind of a cool shape to it. As you can see here, it's, you know, a bit more irregular than most parts, but when it radially attaches to a vessel, oh boy, there we go, it pretty much sits flat on. Where I would have preferred it to be a bit more with its model, you'd think it'd be a bit more angled off to the side, but that's just a minor little complaint. 
Now let's head back up to communications and pop on the sphere. And I love this little antenna here. It is pretty darn cool. Again, we don't see many antennas like this. In fact, I can't think of a mod I've looked at in the past that had something shaped like this. You usually get actual antennae or dishes, arrays, and things of that variety. So having a sphere and a very well put together one too. Very nice on the modeling and texturing on this thing. It's it's just a cool, unique thing. And having both that relay and direct transmission along with being an orbital surveyor scanner is pretty darn cool. Now let's head back up to the engines category and take a look at, um, well, we'll pop this off for now, which uh, this actually also can be attached radially, radially, there we are, and not just via the node. And let's pop on the smallest of the three engines here, which is the Thunder? I'm wondering if that's supposed to be Thunder and they missed the H. Hmm. Well, yeah, pop that on. You can see it is a just pretty tiny little engine, but very well made, very nice on the modeling and texturing there. And this one of the three can be placed radially quite nicely, so you can pop that wherever you want. And then in sort of the middle-sized one of the Lightning, well, that one is definitely meant to be attached by a node. As you can see there, we couldn't attach it radially, but we pop it up there. Again, very nicely detailed on the modeling and texturing on this thing. It is a pretty cool looking engine. And what I especially love about all three of the engines, since they are electric in nature, uh, they all have that cool uh, blue particle effect, which I very much prefer. I, I just love the look of the typical ion engines in this game. They are pretty neat. And the final engine we've got, of course, being the Star. Ah, oh, this thing's great. And gigantic. There it is. We have the Star Curbstein Drive, which, oh boy, yeah, does use not so bad on the liquid fuel and oxidizer. 1.8 per second liquid fuel, 2.2 on the oxidizer, but 12 on the electrical charge, that is going to uh, drain your resources pretty quickly. So with all of these parts, you're gonna wanna make sure you've got a good electrical infrastructure on your vessel. Though, uh, Efficiency-wise, the Lightning is actually quite efficient, using barely any air intake, liquid fuel, and even barely any electric charge there. It overall will run pretty smoothly. Uh, the Thunder kind of being between the two, still not as bad as, say, the Star in its efficiency-wise, especially on the electrical charge, but for what you're getting, thrust-wise, it actually does use a fair amount of things. But all in all, a pretty cool little set of engines. So let's pop on out of here and go over to the launch pad where I do have all three engines ready to go so we can take a look at their particle effects. So let's go to my engine test craft here and take a look at uh, first and foremost, the tiniest of them, the Tunder over here. Just. Just such a small, small little thing. Well, let's uh, keep it at half the throttle to start with and fire that one up. As you can see, just a nice, good blue particle effect there. I do enjoy it. Now let's turn on uh, the lightning. Boom. Starting off pretty yellow there and orange, but then moving over to the blue. And I do like that you got a good combination of the two there where you kind of get this cool purplish effect in between the two particle effects, which is pretty nice. I do really like the look of that. And then finally with the star. And you can just tell even at half thrust how powerful that thing is. It shifted that whole section of the craft. And yeah, just a nice, a cool one there. Kind of similar to this one, particle effect wise, but bigger. And uh, yeah, works quite nicely. And let's throttle this baby all the way up. And you can see all of them getting larger, more powerful. This one producing quite a lot of light on the back side of the engine, which is pretty cool. I do quite like that. You can see how it's illuminating that whole section of the engine. Very cool indeed. And let's fire this thing off and watch it crash, because why not? Oh, yes, they all need that power that they were getting. <laughs> Yes, yeah, wonderful. Well, they've exploded, and that was what I wanted. So let's go to the tracking station and go up into space, where I, of course, have our usual test craft up there, just to show kind of what you can do with this uh, down the road. Now, it's a pretty fast and dirty ship that was made pretty simply, but for its electrical needs, oh boy, yeah, you need 
a lot of power for things to function. But you know what? We've got the cool looking sphere, long range comm scan antennae there. We've got our fun dust accumulators. Let's actually uh, turn that thing on, start accumulating and have it begin to fill our gigantic ore tank. So yeah, just a cool thing. It's not gonna get you, well, actually it is, since it is one per second, it does get it pretty fast. Not as fast, of course, as, you know, the drills on a planet, but over time, you know, you can use this to help with your more long-range deep space missions so they don't run out of fuel on the way. You just gotta make sure that you uh, have plenty of electric charge, but thankfully, thankfully, this ship does have plenty of solar panels. And yeah, just watch it go along, which is pretty cool. And of course, with the just amazing star engine, I really do like that thing. We can venture off into the void with infinite fuel over here, plenty of power from our solar panels, and go around to planets, scanning them with our glorious little sphere. But yeah, that's really all there is to talk about with this lovely mod. The Dangerous Systems is a pretty interesting little selection of assorted parts that I've definitely found myself enjoying. So if you'd like to take a look at it for yourself, which I'd certainly recommend you go and do, you can have a look at the link in the description as per usual. But that, my friends, is going to be it for this one today. Hopefully you all have enjoyed, and you do come back for the next one. Hopefully we'll be looking at another wonderful mod. But until that uh, thank you for watching, and as always, have a good one. Now, I'm just going to put this thing into an uncontrollable spin. Later.